Oh, it's time for another confession this week. The bulk of today's sermon is another virtual one. But as I also said last week, I'm not bringing these sermons to you as summer filler. They are not summer replacement series that couldn't make the cut in the fall and winter and spring. In order to be literate in our Unitarian Universalist faith, I believe it's imperative for y'all to hear the preaching of UU ministers who are not me. Our living religious tradition encompasses a multitude of voices and identities and perspectives. And it helps us remember that we are part of and bound by covenant and in relationship with something larger than just what we've got going here in Corpus. Now, this sermon was given a few weeks ago at Ministry Days, it was, which is a gathering of UU ministers that happens just before our National General Assembly. And I'm sharing this sermon with you today because, to put it simply, it grabbed me by the heart and would not let me go. And, all this, and although this sermon was given to ministers, I'd say about 99% of it applies to everybody. There's some minister-related thank yous in the beginning and a few little inside jokes that you'll probably get anyway just from the context, but that's it. Our virtual preacher is the Reverend Duncan E. Teague, who has founded and has been building the Abundant Love Unitarian Universalist Congregation in the West End of Atlanta. This UU congregation is centered in the African American religious tradition and welcomes all in their authentic self to join in community-centered worship and work. The sermon is titled, Broken, But Not a Wretch, and I invite you to listen closely. Good morning.
to help you deal with your wretchedness because there was this amazing grace from God that was going to handle it for you. Well, that was good. Huh. A wretch. When your liberal religious got a hold of me, And thank you for that. I started thinking about this whole wretched thing, and I thought, you know, I wasn't born a wretch. And I love the song, go see the movie. I love the song, but um, I wasn't born a wretch. Because I questioned all that stuff they left me with. And I thought, you know, I have been broken. But I'm not a wretch. At the core of our theology, we don't necessarily believe that we were born a wretch. I wasn't, and I'm choosing to believe that you are born a wretch. Broken. Hmm. And broken with the assistance of so many forms of oppression. But don't get me wrong, I can't do that real liberal stuff where nobody wants. <laughs> See, if you've been bruised and battered, you've been scorned from one of our traditions. If the world has been pounding at you long enough, you can choose to be wretched. You can choose to do some really wretched things. I've heard, I have seen, that some people within our congregation choose to do wretched things. Not at all. Hmm. So deep down that we would choose to be wretched. Oh, by the way, you'll hear a little Brene Brown in here. Thank you, Brene. I choose to accept that my brokenness is part of my human condition because I've been a person in deep trouble, some that I call. I have been a gay boy wondering why am I so different than all the rest of the boys and how did I get this attraction that makes me a target and an attraction. And when you put together all my innate skills and abilities, you come up with a feminine gay. Hmm. Different from all the rest of the boys, but not wretched. And I was a smart kid, so I was smart enough to figure out that all that preciousness, and I'm going to call fabulosity, <laughs> came factory insult. <laughs> so hear me also clearly that I think that what our society does to boys who are different girls, if they try to break down your precious goodness, some of us come from families that even start before you get here breaking you down. Trying to destroy the fortitude If I must. And it didn't work. It never works. Hallelujah. I think that I might have some witnesses here from folks who had the world trying to break you down from what you knew you were inside. And I think that we must have that shell that will protect who we are innately. But y'all, 
not all of us, but some of us lead from that place where the two grumbling as it's me, where it's not comfortable, where you are more than one identity, where you always are talking to somebody who doesn't look like the rest of the folks in the room. And we scare the mess out of folks. Broken, vulnerable. And the other thing, this audacious, crazy black queen is going to beg and plead with you to do it with love. Lovingly, do all the stuff that we want to do. Address our brokenness with love. There's this old book that they made me read. And it says that if we're not doing it with love, we are claiming symbols. And I'm going to add a, a, a react to it because it was probably so green wrote it anyway. <laughs> and if we don't do it with love, we're wasting people's time. So I'm begging you to help me grow, help me heal the broken places and lovingly because I'm not perfect. And I'm not going to do this work we need to do, that we must do, that Cheryl says we have to do. <laughs> I'm not going to do it perfectly. And you aren't either. And that's not the point, because y'all told me that liberal religious are more concerned with the relationship than competition. Hmm. <laughs> Carol Sissel, I'm trying to do like you do. Give 45 minute sermons in three minutes. I don't know. Reverend Teague tells us we've all got those broken places to varying degrees. And you know, many people come to church to seek healing of those broken parts, even though we don't really talk about that too much here. But church is a place where people come for healing. And unfortunately, in this place, this place where people come to feel safe and hope to heal. Sometimes we still manage to hurt each other. Sometimes by accident, sometimes by ignorance or carelessness. 
it really is unintentional most of the time. But it is a truth we have to face because we can't fall into that liberal religious trap that Reverend Teague talked about where no one is ever wrong. Yes, here we have freedom. We have freedom regarding our theological beliefs, which is such a blessing. But this freedom, you know, it is, it is in constant tension, constant relationship with responsibility. That's why one of our principles talks about the free and responsible search for truth and meaning. It's no accident that free and responsible are side by side. As a covenanted community, we do not have the freedom to trample over the feelings of others or oppress others or marginalize others. And our covenant, our sacred shared promise asks more of us. It doesn't ask us to be perfect. It doesn't demand that we be instantly voted off the island, but it, it expects us to be held accountable for what we do and what we say and its impact on others. When that idea of freedom as I can do whatever I want, say whatever I want, is held up as the singular most important you, you virtue, a get out of jail free card or for selfish and harmful behavior, I really start to worry because that's simply not Unitarian Universalism. Because idolization of freedom and this idea of you, 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 youism being all about stubborn individualism, it's an absolute insult to the faith tradition that I love and that I am called to. That description of you, you's as anti-authoritarian individuals who can't be told what to do is actually a description of us at our worst. It's a description that's passe, that's spiritually immature. It enforces spiritually immature behaviors and an entitled exceptionalism that has scared people away from Unitarian Universalism for decades. Those days are long gone, not on my watch. In this great turning and this time of struggle and transformation that Reverend Marta Valentin talked about so eloquently last week, we are called to actually live up to our ideals and be the people we actually profess to be. Because freedom, that is not a value in a vacuum. What about the inherent worth and dignity of every person? What about compassion? What about equity? What about justice? Is freedom more important than any of those? How about interdependence? Doesn't our world need more consciousness of that right now more than ever during this time of immigrant detention camps and pending climate catastrophe? I can tell you rugged individualism is not going to solve those problems. So let's talk more about that idea of healing. Reverend Teague says that in order to heal our broken places together, we have to be vulnerable. We need to get real about who we are and where we need help. And we can't be vulnerable when there is no trust. We all have to be trustworthy to be a safe place to hold each other's vulnerabilities. How many of us have ever had our vulnerabilities used against us in harmful ways, right? Being vulnerable is scary and dangerous when there is no trust. And you know, this means letting go of some old programming. Like Reverend Teague said, liberal religion is supposed to be, be more concerned with relationships than competition. Did you notice that big, hmm, he said after that? He didn't appear to be convinced that is truly the case, and I'm really not convinced either. He said our religion should not be about power and control like they teach us in America. I'll add it should not be about put being right over being in right relationship. It should not be about fighting to get one's way or winning every argument 
because it's really no wonder that our congregations are unable to embrace vulnerability under those conditions. We've all had forces in our lives that have worked to break down our precious goodness. And this right here, this is a place that has the potential to build that goodness back up. But for us to feel safe so that we can break our shells and be vulnerable, we have to be able to trust one another. So I ask you today, are you willing to participate in a cultural shift to vulnerability? How does this community need to change? How does it need to behave differently so that you can trust it enough to share your broken places? And what might your part be in making this change, this shift? And to build a sense of trust and safety with one another, we need our covenant to be taken seriously and guarded strongly so we are able to meet at the broken places and lovingly mend them, restoring our precious goodness and growing stronger in those healed places, just like Reverend Teague said. May it be so, and blessed be.